creativity is like my life. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Well, obviously there was a time in your life when creativity, you know, maybe wasn't the top priority. It seems as though you used creativity to turn your life around in some way. I did. I have to tell you, I mean, I had Miss Ray's art school at age five. So I was always into art. Uh, it was just, you know, I taught my sister and all her friends and, you know, I always loved art. And yet it was a double-edged sword for me because my, I won an art contest when I was seven and got to put my artwork in a um, show in Chicago and I got my paper, a picture in the newspaper and it created attention for my grandfather who was an artist. And so he had me come to his art studio. And at that point, I, um, from age seven to 13, he sexually abused me in that art studio. So art was always a pleasure and a pain at the same time. So I did use art for healing. There is no doubt. I didn't realize it, you know, uh, when I finally made that decision that I, you know, I, I went into talk therapy and, you know, but there was a long period where I didn't do any painting, drawing, anything for like 12 years. I had a professor in college who said, you're a terrible artist, Stop, get out of my class, and I left. And I didn't know I was having flashbacks at that time. And so I just stopped painting. I stopped doing anything that was artistic. And so, Yeah, okay, let me just stop you for a while, Ray, because there, there's, um, there's a question in my mind. Sure. A lot of people, a lot of people associate creativity and art as though they are synonyms and yet I'm sure you'll probably agree that there are lots of artists who are not at all creative. Right and there are a lot of people who yes and I would say that there are a lot of people who are creative that are not artists. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they're not I, synonyms yes. They're not synonyms but I think it for me creativity is a much broader concept and I, when I do work with people I talk about a creative expression and that can be gardening it can be how you um, handle a difficult client at work it can be how you break through the ceiling at work you know or, or those kinds of things how you plan for a snow day you know <laughs> those kind of things so creativity is not about being an artist it's so I, I totally it is about creative thinking it is about using your creativity and make a difference in the world and the other thing is that a lot of artists um, they tend to have the kind of issues that you talk about in terms of traumas and um you know there's famous examples of very you know well-renowned um very successful artists who even though they are highly creative their inner life or their personal lives are absolutely traumatic you know the there seems to be a strong correlation between that somehow. Uh, there is on some level because I think they're always looking for ways to express the pain and I think that's why you, you might hear and make that correlation but I also know artists who just live in a in a place of joy you know so I won't, is, won't say that you know I mean I know one of the myths is oh a mental illness big you know that's why and you know those kind of things they're creative. Sure there are people who are going to cut off their ear you know but the most of the people I know don't, but I do, I, I would say creativity, artistry, expression, and it can be dance, it can be music, it can be painting, it can be whatever it is, is about um, expressing yourself, going inside. It's a way to go inside and then share what's in there in a different way. It's also an explorative tool. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? Um, I used scribbles and doodles over the years. I had an art school called Art and Soul Connections. And I still use this with all my clients today. It's like you start with a scribble and I have them use their non-dominant hands and close their eyes. So there is no judgment. It's not about being an artist. It's about how do you express yourself and what are you feeling? And we talk about color and we talk about, so what color is angry? What color is peace? You know, those kinds of things. And I have them scribble it. Right. And that expression you know we have to be careful to make the distinction that not all expression is creativity it a scribble is a scribble it can you know if somebody is a very famous artist let, let's 
think about Picasso, for example, even a scribble by Picasso is considered to be highly valuable because of right. his status. Right. But he would say, you know, the story about him scribbling on a napkin and somebody, and he, and somebody came up to him and said, can I have that? And he said, yeah, for a million dollars. And, he's, and, and they were appalled, but it was like, well, how did I get from here to here? You know, it was all the years, the, the whatever angst I went through, it was all the learning I had to do, all those pieces. So who am I to say, you know, if you think about, um, uh, she wrote Harry Potter. You know, she scribbled it on a napkin. It was just notes. J.K. Rowling. Thank you. I couldn't think at the moment. But J.K. Rowling, you know, that's, that's the idea, again, is scribbling in, with words. But look what she has done and accomplished from those scribbles. So and I, I want to see a lot of action. So she's another excellent example of someone who, you know, those, um, the same stories that now are renowned all over the world, they faced a lot of, she faced a lot of She rejection. faced a lot of hardship, definitely. So when we talk about Picasso wanting a million dollars for something that he scribbled on a napkin, the question is, well, who says that that is worth a, thousand, a, million, a million dollars? Who says that? Well, he did. You know, it's the artist. The artist can, you know, charge whatever they want for their work. <laughs> Whether someone buys it or not is another story. But it's, it's, I think, too, it's how do we value our personal expression? You know, where do we go with that? And, and I know a lot of artists who struggle with how do I price my work? You know, I know for myself, I used to always give it away. Oh, you like it here? You know, you want this piece? Sure. You know, I'd ra you know, at that point, I was saying I'd rather let the universe, people in the world, experience the, the message, the joy, the beauty, whatever it is they found, and I would give it away, and I don't do that anymore. You know, so I, and it, you know, and I've worked with jewelry makers and things like that who are, who are struggling with the same thing. How do I charge for the work I do and bring into the world? So do you think that, you know, that giving things away freely was an essential kind of step in that process of um, gaining that social evaluation that you needed to? I, I think so. For me, it was. Um, I think it's really important that we, you know, we have to share what we do. And, you know, it's like, yeah, there are plenty of artists who just keep it private. They never share it with a single soul. And yet I think if we're given a gift, and I call it, creative expression a gift that we are meant to share it because one person out there is waiting to hear your story one person needs to see that painting one of the paintings I put out on Facebook in the last year this girl called me and said this has meant so much to me can I use it on my personal web page it's just touch my heart it speaks to me and I said sure you know so in that case I that's what happens when you do that and you don't you don't know if you keep it all to yourself so when you talk about creativity and then, you know from your youtube video you talk about uh creativity and, and depression do you think it's possible to be depressed and creative at the same time or do you think that creativity can be used to heal depression or you know well, I, I think creativity heals depression i think when you're in that flow when you are in that space you're not thinking about yourself in that way, you're not constricted. It's an expansive exercise when you create. And so I think it gets you out of whatever you're feeling. And I believe that we hold on to memories on a cellular level, a somatic response. And so when you're creating, at least, you know, whether you're dancing, moving, singing, whatever, you're letting it out. So I think that you, you cannot be as depressed. Uh, I certainly, it helped me. I changed me tremendously. I mean, the transformation was huge. I was like the person who like looked down. I never talked to anybody. I never had an opinion. And yet the minute I started letting all these feelings go through, you know, scribbles and doodles, painting, whatever it was, writing, and I changed. I became a more assertive, outgoing. Um, people noticed. I looked happier. You know, I made, it made a tremendous difference in my own personal world. And, and is there a cycle that, you know, we need to kind of like be expansive and at the same time we need to allow ourselves to withdraw and to incubate and to feel? Oh, that's a whole, I think that's a whole other discussion. Incubation in itself is, is a process. And I think there's lots of steps you can take. You know, it's, I, I was just writing an article for 
a talk I'm giving next week about, you know, how do you break through your blocks, you know, for work, for anything. And it doesn't have to be as an artist, you know. And so that is going out in nature. That is spending time out there. And I, I always talk about like walk about change where I, I take a camera or a sketchbook and I'll go up one side of the street and look for everything that's negative. Then I come back and I switch around and say, look for everything that's positive. So that dandelion coming up through the crack and the kind of ah, weed, right? Oh my God, look at that beautiful thing came through the, the, the concrete. So it's about our, our ability to, to shift perspective and that's part of the incubation process and breaking through those blocks. And there's lots of tools to do that, you know, but I think being out in nature in itself is healing. And when we spend time just looking, you know, I, 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 I think observation is a skill that we can all develop. So, you know, the, what's ugly to you? And then spend time looking at what makes it beautiful, you know, that kind of thing. And we, we all have that ability and we don't have to be with other people to do that. But those are all the things that I think that allow us to change and look. So it's like, what are the gifts of the, the trauma you experience, the challenges you face? What are the gifts? So that again is taking that, that piece about looking and observing and finding out what's good in it. And, and at the same time, being able to do something with that, with those observations that adds value, if, if only just for ourselves, you know? Right. I think that we, we all have stories of overcoming. We all have stories of resilience. And we may not think they're valuable, but they are. And storytelling is creative expression. It is a way that we share who we are with the world. And, you know, that I, I believe I used to do a program called um, Brave Women Share Secrets. You know, it's, it's like, that's what it's about. It's like, we all have a secret. It's something that we're ashamed of, something that happened to us that we experience, whether it could be suicide, depression, somebody got divorced, you know, all these things. And we think we're alone. And until we share that, we don't know. And it's like, oh my God, that happened to you too? And do you think that's one of the things that perhaps in compulsory education, something that we're not focusing enough on in empowering people to be natural storytellers? Oh, totally. I don't think that we spend enough time using creativity as, as the gift it is. You know, I think we spent a long time in the last, you know, at least in the United States, you know, you have these court, you know, core programs. And so it's all about you gotta, you gotta do that and you gotta pass your test. So we've lost sight of the importance of creativity, imagination, storytelling, all the pieces that, you know, it's this core curriculum is the only thing. And so when you get focused on there's only one right answer, what are we doing to the people, to the, to the future generations? Yes, and, and also, you know, I'm thinking back about education, like sometimes we're told to write stories, but we're not, we're not taught how to speak stories. And it's actually in the the spoke the the spoken voice where where it's alive where we're using our energy as opposed to the logical mind structuring a story in, for the written word they're very different skills aren't they oh they are very different skills and i th i'm so glad you brought that up because i think being a storyteller I, and that's part of the reason i like to tell stories and i've interviewed you know 200 people and i'm interviewing somebody after we're done today you know because it's about telling their stories and having creating a safe space for somebody to be authentic to get validation to be witnessed to to just express who they are you know we've got this whole society of people that have lost the ability to speak because everything's 140 characters and they just text everything. So there's no eye contact. They don't know how to shake a hand. They don't have the vocabulary, you know, and that ability to really connect with people eye to eye and, and in a heart-centered way. Creativity is a tool that we all have. We have, it's like a muscle and it needs to be worked. We are all born creative. I believe that, you know, the doctor, um, I think it was Leonard, Runners, you know, did a study. 98% of children under the age of five are creative. And by the time they're 30, only 2% believe they're creative. So it is there. It is something that can be reignited, rediscovered. And a lot, when we allow that to blossom, I think that is how we're going to solve all the problems of the world. You know, we have a lot of social problems and we need, we need new solutions. And these are the people who can do it if they allow themselves to tap into that creative space. Thank you.